On this edition of Food for Life, Father Mark Goring looks at Best Friend Forever. You know, best friends forever. Yeah, right, you know. (laughs) This is forever. Maybe, maybe not. But when Jesus promises us that he will, will give us life forever, that he will be with us forever, that he will uh, sustain us forever. He means it. Okay, in the first reading today, um, beautiful reading from wisdom, and it speaks about the importance of wisdom. And it's very interesting. It says, wisdom is more important, it's more valuable than being king, than sitting on a throne. Wisdom is, is, is more valuable even than all the gold and the silver. Wisdom is even more important than your health. Wisdom is more valuable even than beauty, than being beautiful. Wisdom, it, it says, is even more important than light. Wisdom is, is, is so important because if we don't have wisdom, no matter what we have, is, 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 is nothing. Now, there are thousands, probably tens of thousands, maybe hundreds of thousands of books that are filled with wisdom. You know, especially recently in the last couple of decades, the whole um, self-help book industry is, is just exploded, you know. And a lot of these books are good. Like, I read some of them. I, you know, I like to, to, to seek wisdom and learn wisdom. There's a lot of good, good things out there. But I'll spare you reading the hundreds of thousands of books or tens of thousands of books, and I'll proclaim to you that the wisest thing a person can do is to make Jesus the center of his life or of her life. The wisest thing we can do is make Jesus the center. Did you hear? I didn't say part of your life. I said make Jesus the center of your life. Jesus said, he said, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will not walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. Jesus also said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one goes to the Father except through me. Scripture also says that God so loved the world that he gave his Son, so that whoever believes in him will not perish, but will have eternal life. And Scripture also says, whoever believes in Jesus, Jesus, those who believe in him, are given power to become children of God. Again, we're not talking about kind of associating with Jesus. Or being, you know, kind of, you know, uh, somewhat uh, friends with Jesus. We're talking about Jesus being the center of your life. Jesus being your Lord, your Savior, your Redeemer, the Bridegroom of your soul. Like Thomas, my Lord and my God, my God and my all. That's wisdom. That's eternal life, having Jesus at the center It's interesting, Jesus told the rich young man, who he goes to Jesus, what must I do to inherit eternal life? And and you know how the story goes. And Jesus said to him, you lack one thing. Now I love the one thing. You've heard me preach on the one thing many times. In Luke chapter 10, when Martha was serving and Mary was just sitting at the feet of Jesus and Martha complained to Jesus, said, tell my sister to help. Jesus said to Martha, He said to her, there is need of only one thing. Now you better pay close attention when Jesus the Savior says there's need of only one thing. There's need of only one thing. Mary has chosen the better part and it will not be taken from her. And what's the one thing? What's Mary doing? She's sitting at the feet of Jesus. She's listening to his voice. His voice that raises the dead. His voice that breathes eternal life. She's listening to his voice and she's gazing upon him. Her eyes are on the Lord. And it's it's interesting, Jesus says to this young man, he says, you lack one thing. 
Go sell everything you, you own. Give it to the poor and follow me. Follow me. Be with me. Listen to my words. Come to know me. Learn from me. This, this, is, this is the one thing to, to, to be with Jesus, to hear Jesus' voice, to learn from him. And again, to, to pass up this invitation in our life is the most foolish thing a person could do in this life. And we can come up with all the brilliant reasons we want for not making Jesus the center of our life, you know. Well, there's a lot of religions, and well, you know, the times are changing, and well, maybe when I get older, and well, you know, I'm kind of, you know, into other things. We can come up with all the reasons to not give our life to Jesus and make Him the center, and all of those reasons just make us make the the most foolish decision of our life to not make Jesus the center of our life, to not follow Him. The Lord Jesus is the only one who can truly say to us the word forever, in the fullness sense of the word. You know, best friends forever. Yeah, right, you know. (laughs) This is forever. Maybe, maybe not. But when Jesus promises us that he will, will give us life forever, that he will be with us forever, that he will uh, sustain us forever. He means it, and he can do it. And there's no one else but God who can, who can give us the forever promise. And so again, the Lord invites us to not just keep him at a healthy distance. Do you know that many even Catholics who go to church regularly and try to live good lives still like to keep Jesus at a healthy distance? You know, they'll do their church thing on Sunday, we'll, we'll you know, kind of maybe say some prayers sometimes, but at the end of the day we're saying, hey Jesus, don't get too close. It's still my life. I still want to be the one sitting on the throne in my life. And again, that's not what the Lord calls us to. He calls us to surrender our life to Him and to say, Lord, I want you to be the Lord of my life. I actually do trust you and I give you everything. I don't just give you some of my heart. I don't just give you a little bit of my heart. I give you all of my heart. And when I say to you, God, I give you permission to do whatever you want with my life, I mean anything, Lord. I believe in you, I trust in you, I love you, and I give you everything. It's the wisest decision we can make in our life, to be completely surrendered to the Lord Jesus. In the second reading from Hebrews, we're reminded that God's Word is alive and active. The Lord Jesus speaks His Word to us. He gives us His Word. His Word gives life. And the Lord Jesus calls us, to, to, like, like Mary, to listen to His voice, to hear His Word. Jesus says, and check this one out. Jesus says, He says, if you remain in My Word. It's an if statement. It's a promise that starts with an if statement. If you remain in my word, you will truly be my disciple. And that's why in our discipleship series we say, listen, if you want to be a disciple of Jesus, you got to read the Bible every day. Every day. Does someone have an excuse why you can't read the Bible every day? at least one verse of the Bible and think about it and meditate on it. Jesus says, if you remain in my word, you will truly be my disciple. That's one of the big tragedies in the Catholic Church. And even in Christianity in general, not just the Catholics, so many Christians, we don't remain in his word. We don't spend a little bit of time or ideally a lot of time every day listening to his voice, pondering his word. His word, brothers and sisters, it's alive. It's effective, sharper than any two-edged sword. (laughs) Scripture says the wise, wise person ponders his word day and night. We're called to be in his word. If 
you remain in my word, you will truly be my disciples. And then what's the second part? And you will know the truth. Everyone thinks they know the truth. There's not one, or I guess maybe some people say, I'm seeking the truth. Well, if you're seeking the truth, Jesus says, if you remain in my word, you will truly be my disciples, and you will know the truth. And the truth will set you free. The truth will set you free. We want to be free. We want to enjoy the freedom of the children of God that Scripture talks about. If you want to be free, you need to remain in His Word. Read the Bible every day. Love God's Word. Ponder God's Word. Meditate on God's Word. And, and we'll be free. And again, this, is, this little verse, the truth will set you free. People like to throw that out. The truth will set you free, you know. Well, what truth? Whose truth? This, this biblical reality has an if statement. If you remain in my word, you will truly be my disciples. You will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. The one thing is to sit at the feet of Jesus, to hear his voice, to receive his word into our hearts. And again, I don't know how a person can do that. A grown person who can read, who, who has enough you know, ability in their life to, to spend time in Scripture, how a person cannot spend time in Scripture and still consider himself a disciple of Jesus. Brothers and sisters, I'm speaking words to you of everlasting life. I'm not speaking words to you that will just kind of, you know, improve your life a bit or enrich your life. I'm speaking words to you that give eternal life. And they're not my words, they're Jesus' words. It's God's word. And God's word is more important than all the self-help books. As nice as they are, God's word gives eternal life. God's Word is a rock. It's a rock. If we build our life on this rock, when the storms come, we will not be shaken. We will continue with the teaching by Father Mark in just a moment. The Food for Life ministry is only made possible by the financial donations from you, our viewers. We ask that after the program, you prayerfully consider a tax-deductible financial donation to help us continue this Catholic television ministry. To save postage, you may now make your donation online. Just go to our website and follow the link. Thank you for your prayers and support. And now back to Father Mark Goring. Jesus tells the young man, he says to him, follow me. Jesus calls every person to follow him. Each one of us in our own unique way. Part of being a Christian is at one point you hear in your heart, you feel in your heart the words of Jesus, the call of Jesus to follow me. And like this rich young man, we need to make a decision. Will I let go of the things in my life? You know what, when you see little you know, movies or films about the, the gospel, oftentimes they show the rich young men He's got a little mule, and he's sitting on a cart. His mule is pulling a cart, and his cart is full of junk. <laughs> you know, pots and vases and who knows what else. And that's what he's not willing to let go of, his little cart with his junk. He's so attached to it. He thinks his cart full of junk is going to make him happy. And here you have Jesus, the Savior of the world, say, Hey, come follow me. It says Jesus was going on another journey. Like, why would you not want to embark on a journey with Jesus? Because of your cart full of junk? Leave that stuff behind. No one's saying that this stuff is bad or you can't have it in your life if you're supposed to have it in your life. But don't be so attached to it that if the Lord Jesus says, hey, let go of that stuff, come follow me, that you can't do that. Every one of us is f called to follow the Lord Jesus, each one in a unique way. Some people are called to literally living a life of poverty, like the missionaries of charity or the Franciscans or other, other people uh, like that. But not every person is called to literally just give everything away and, and, and live a life of poverty. And an example of that is, you remember learning about the life of St. Francis of Assisi, one of the great lovers of poverty. He'd go around preaching and he'd tell people, listen, don't worry about your life. Don't worry about food and clothing. God takes care of the birds. He's going to take care of you. 
give everything away, you know, and, and, and people would, would do that. You know, he, he, towards the end of his life, there was literally thousands of people who just gave everything away and were living on Providence. But he went into one town, the town of Canara, and he preached. God takes care of the birds. Your father takes care of the birds. Don't worry about riches. Well, the whole town was ready to just leave everything. And they say Francis was kind of like, whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> well, wait a minute, you know. Like some of you have children and you know this. So that's when he started the third order of Franciscans. So people who would still remain in the world, they'd have their house and their little fields and their, you know, whatever, their cow and their, you know, their, 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 their raised money so that their kids could get an education. They would still kind of have their, their, their things of the world, but they would try to live a life of detachment. So even St. Francis recognized that the call to literally give everything away to the poor, that's a particular call for some people. This rich young man received that call. He didn't respond to it. But again, each one of us is called to follow Jesus in our own unique way. And when we hear that call, we need to say yes. The rich young man, he wouldn't give up his cart full of junk. And it says he went away sad. And this is the sadness of the world. Our world is filled with sadness. It's just a reality. You don't need me to belabor the point. Our world is filled with sadness. And when we let go of the things of this world, our attachment to this world, and make Jesus the Lord of our life, the center of our life, and begin this journey with the Lord Jesus, it brings joy. The disciples of Jesus... They were experiencing persecution. There was all kinds of hardships and trials, but they were having a blast. They were, it, was, it was thrilling to walk with Jesus. Even though there was trials and, and, and difficulties, there's a joy that comes with knowing that you are on a mission from God, that you are on a heavenly journey, that you are being guided by a heavenly light. And you don't know exactly where you're going, like Abraham. It says Abraham went off and he didn't know where he was going, you know. That, that can be applied to every follower of Jesus. I don't know where I'm going. All I know is I've given my life to Jesus. I believe in him. I have faith in him. And I'm trying as best I can to follow the promptings of the Holy Spirit in my life. And somehow this makes my life meaningful and there's joy. And especially spending this time with Jesus every day, like Mary sitting at the feet of Jesus in his word, in prayer, in repentance, in gratitude, in, th in, in, in praise, uh, sustains us. Jesus said, let anyone who thirsts come to me and drink. Whoever believes in me, as scripture says, out of his heart will flow rivers of living water. Do rivers of living water flow out of your heart? According to Jesus, they should. According to the Old Testament, your heart should be a wellspring that flows with life and rivers of living water. But if you want your heart to be a wellspring with a flow of life, you have to, like Jesus said, let anyone who thirsts come to me and drink. And I will give you live, rivers of, of living water. And so, brothers and sisters, what I want to do is I want to put out a call. If there's anyone here today who has been trying to keep Jesus at a healthy distance, you've been trying to have a professional relationship with Jesus, you know? He's on your LinkedIn or whatever. He's one of your friends on Facebook, but you don't want him too close. You, don't, you haven't really trusted Him. You haven't had the courage to surrender to Him. But today you're hearing God's Word and you're saying, you know what, I'm ready. I'm ready to give my heart to Jesus and to allow Him to give me freedom and give me light and give me peace and give me joy because I'm sick and tired of being sad. I want life. I want my heart to be a wellspring. I invite you, if that's you, to come forward. Many of you, you've already done this. This is a reality in your life. Please remain seated. But if you're here today and you're saying, I honestly can say I've never, 
allow Jesus to be the center of my life, I invite you to come forward now, and I'm going to lead you into a prayer of surrender to Jesus. And the Lord Jesus will hear your prayer. And He will make you new, and your heart will begin to flow with a divine life. So come forward now, if this is what the Lord is stirring in your heart. Praise you, Jesus. Praise you, Lord Jesus. Why don't you join me in praying to the Lord. Dear Jesus, I believe in you, and I love you. Jesus, I give you my heart today. I surrender everything to you. I'm sorry for all of my sins. I'm sorry for believing so many lies and for not believing you. Please forgive me, Jesus. Come into my heart and be the Lord of my heart. Heal me, Jesus, and make me new. Fill me with your Holy Spirit. I will follow you, dear Jesus, all the days of my life. Amen. For an audio CD or video DVD of the teaching by Father Mark going on, Best Friend Forever, we invite you to write to us. Our address is Food for Life, Box 1107, Station F, Toronto, Ontario, M4Y2T8. When you write, ask for an audio CD or video DVD of program 1760. On the next edition of Food for Life, from the Lift Jesus Higher Rally, Patty Mansfield. And this, this day, for those of you who have not yet had a pen, personal Pentecost, this day could radically change your life. Amen? And so, oh, yes. And so first, pray with expectant faith. So my question for you today is, do you have buttons? Do you have these things that people can push to either make you sad or make you angry or make you fearful? Do you have buttons that people can push? I do. I've got lots of them. And I'm really feeling that what God wants is he's trying to make me buttonless. He wants to get rid of all my buttons because... Those buttons are just a pain. They're a pain to have. I'm tired of having those buttons. It's possible to get there, and I'm seeing growth slowly but surely. I'm seeing my buttons very slowly go away. And this is how they're going away. So let's look at what happens when someone presses your button. When someone says something that, that, you know, that, that criticizes you, that criticizes the work you've done, or opposes your opinion, how does it make you feel on the inside? Well, it may make you feel less about yourself. You may feel, wow, oh, I'm not very smart. It make you feel sad. You feel down in yourself. Or it may make you feel angry. Hey, that person has no business to say that to me. And yet the place where the Lord wants to bring us is, is to go, is to just hear that and not have our joy or our peace taken away from us so that someone may share something with us and, and, and maybe it's true. Maybe it's true with the, the feedback they're giving us. Yeah, well, maybe we did this thing at the office and at a meeting someone said, well, that wasn't very smart and they were absolutely right. And here's how the Lord would, would like us to be able to respond. You know, Fred, you make a very good point and I'm going to change that in the future. 
And the reason why we can say that is this, is because where, where does our self-esteem come from? Where does your self-worth come from? Well, if you're a Christian, it comes from Jesus. All of your identity and all of your self-worth and all of your value comes because you are loved by the Father. Now, that's not to say that he doesn't want to use us. He absolutely does. He's given us these tremendous gifts that he wants us to place at the service of the church and the human community and our families. He's, he's got stuff he'd like us to do. And he'd like us to grow in those gifts and, 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 and that the, the use of those gifts would be fruitful. But he doesn't want our identity and our self-worth and our self-value to be completely tied to those things so that we can be free. If someone gives us a bit of feedback that, that maybe we feel a little bit hurt by, we can say, you know, on the inside we can say, you know what, Papa, Father, you love me so much. Yeah, this is definitely an area I need to work on. Bob's, Bob's point was completely right on. That's an area that I need to change. But, you know, that's fine. You and I will change it together. With your help, I'm going to make this improvement. But it doesn't really bother me that much because this does not change how valuable I am, how loved I am, or whether my needs are going to be met. Because let's say I get, I get some negative feedback at work. I don't have to worry about losing my job because worst case, you'll get me another one. So really, I have nothing to worry about. Anyway, I'd really like to get rid of all of my buttons because they're kind of a pain. And if I can stay in this place of remembering who I am, if I can remember who I am, then I can go around buttonless. We would like to thank you for your financial support of the Food for Life television ministry. Food for Life is funded only by viewers like yourself. We have no commercial sponsors. Your tax-deductible donations help pay for production of the program, pay the television station for the time that the program is on the air, and pay for the mailing of our monthly newsletter. Thank you again for your support of this Catholic television ministry. For an audio CD or video DVD of today's ministry, we invite you to write to us. When you write, mention the program number 1760 and today's topic, Father Mark Goring on Best Friend Forever. Food for Life is a non-profit Catholic charity funded only by donations from viewers. To help us continue this Catholic television ministry, please send your tax-deductible donation to Food for Life, Box 1107, Station F, Toronto, Ontario, M4Y2T8. To save postage, you may now make your donation online. Just go to our website and follow the link. We ask you to consider a regular monthly donation, either by post-dated checks or through our website, to help fulfill the Great Commission from Matthew 28:19. Go and make disciples of all nations. On the next edition of Food for Life, from the Lift Jesus Higher Rally, Patty Mansfield. And this, this day, for those of you who have not yet had a pen, personal Pentecost, this day could radically change your life. Amen? And, oh, yes. And so first, pray with expectant faith. For an audio CD or video DVD of the teaching by Father Mark going on, Best Friend Forever, we invite you to write to us. Our address is Food for Life, Box 1107, Station F, Toronto, Ontario, M4Y2T8. When you write, ask for an audio CD or video DVD of program 1760.